So we just went through some of the practical uses of the components on the board. I just wanted to run through some of the fun sort of animatronic stuff that you can bring your um, train set to life with. Uh, so, for example, you could have a, a beam breaker here that notices when the train is leaving the platform and you could get the guy to, to signal and you could do that by one of the output pins here. Um, I need to look up how this guy works, but it's certainly possible. Um, a few other things that you could do is you could um, buy a very simple little kit like this um, and you could, with your servo horn coupler, you could basically, uh, with the allen bolt here, um, obviously make sure you get the right size. You could um, simply attach this onto here and screw this up. Um, drill a hole on the other side of this, not all the way through obviously because that needs to sit in there quite nicely. Um, so you want to sit this on, on the underneath on, obviously here and this will twist around. Um, if you had a beam breaker um, sat along here then obviously as the train comes in you could have the, or, or certainly beam breaker a bit further up so that you had a wagon behind. So. It comes up and as the beam breaker hits, the DCC command to stop the train happens and then the crane arm can swing out. So you get, get you know, sort of bring the thing to life. As that um, beam breaker is then um, returned back to its normal state, then obviously the arm can swing back again. Um, or you can indeed time it so that um, when the beam breaker is on, it swings out for five seconds and then swings back. And th these sorts of things are possible. A few other toys that you could play with. Um, if you have a look at is this um, action model, Hornby action model. Again, just brings a little bit to life. R rather than actually using um, a manual, a manual switch, um, you could again very simply um, modify this so that um, this is obviously being controlled um, through our. Um, servo arm pretty much like we did here um, and again you could just use that to, to switch it backwards and forwards um, and that, that should work quite nicely so a, a, another little animatronic item that you can bring to life um, and, and there's other things as well so if we had a look at um, maybe we've got another different type of crane here and again this crane um, sits in this holder here underneath that holder um, you could and then again sit the servo horn you could have this on a time motion you could have some people around it um, would would look quite interesting and again um, you'd obviously want to make sure you've got the right size um, but that that can um, that part which is the upright on this model um, could then um, sit inside here, uh, screw it up. You obviously need to pad that out and get a different size, um, and then just sit it on the on the servo. Um, set them in the max very simply, and then decide how you want it to work with beam breaker, a timer, or, or even a button. Um, so you know the kids could bring it to life by pressing the button or something like that. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, Fella, and do some little kits like this. And um, so basically, this is a little dog that sits inside a pen. Um, and basically, that has, I'm not sure if you can see in there, but it does have as a, a tiny little, let's see if it fits this in. Um, yeah, it does have a very tiny little piece of metal there that attaches to a servo arm already and maybe that'll give you some ideas to do yourself um, but again you know something very simple and I think the controller board for that is quite expensive and um, on here obviously you've got the advantage that you can do all sorts of animatronics um, up to sort of 32. Um, we've got another item here as well which is a little coal hopper and um, the way this works is that by default it's got a uh, a point motor in it um, and that just magnetically pulls backwards and forwards and again you can have the beam breaker or magnetic switch or hall sensor and that basically comes along opens that um, opens that hopper up and and drops some coal into a truck and um, I mean that that really does start bringing things to life 
So another thing that you could have a look at is signals. So we've got some signals here and you can see um, the metal poles that run up and down here. Now they turn the signals on and off. Um, they just move the signal arm up and down. Um, because you can set the minimum and maximum on the servos, it makes that relatively easy. Um, so that's another thing that you could set up. Uh, another thing, um, another water, water crane. Um, that could swing out as a train approaches the station or, or wherever you position that. Um, and again, um, just using some um, very minimal components. And um, other fun stuff as well, like these bigger cranes. Um, so you can automate these. Um, now I haven't had a chance to do any of these yet, but obviously they're mechanical and these bits and pieces um, are fairly straightforward and, and you can modify these with your own ideas. But uh, I should imagine even a, a micro servo would probably fit in the cab and upside down and be able to twist around the, the pivot point here. Um, and then finally, maybe some level crossings. Um, open and close some level crossings. Uh, maybe you have to be a little inventive about how I do that and do a separate video. But um, that's certainly possible and there's some that you can already already get which allow you to do it. Um, not to mention the fact that obviously uh, uncoupling and coupling trains could be quite fun. And um, again, there's manual versions of those available. There's some that have metal um, components that push up in between the couplers and um, others that lift the, the um, two trains up as they separate. Um, but yeah, there's certainly a whole host of things that you can um, consider um, hooking up. And really the, the limitations are your own ideas. <laughs>